trying to let some people come on the live let the live build up when you come on this live please share this video on this important day i'm about to add the system to this live and we're just going to talk a little bit it's not going to be a long video it's just going to be the sister going to come on real quick and she's going to explain uh the biafran heroes day the biafran genocide and memorial to my brothers and sisters here in the United States of America who really not up on the Biafran genocide. So I'm about to tag her into the, I'm about to bring her into this live in a few. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm just going to ask her a few simple questions so she can, you know, so y'all can get a better understanding on, you know, what the Biafran genocide is and what this day is about. You know what I'm saying? Because this day is very important to African, new African people here in North America because a lot of your ancestors came from the Bight of Biafra and came from Biafra land during the transatlantic slave trade, which marks the 400 year anniversary here in Virginia of the slave trade when those first Africans were, were brought here to Virginia and the North American shores in 1619. This is also the 52nd year of this commemoration of those Biafran freedom fighters and those Biafrans, Igbo people, that were genocided by the Nigerian government with the help of the British oligarchy and the British Empire, genocided 3.5 million. Most of these uh, great people, people were kids, children, mothers, grandmothers, fathers, mothers, innocent citizens of the nation of Biafra that was genocided from the month of May 30th, 1967 to the month of January 15, 1970. And most of this genocide was taken, uh, let me explain, most of this genocide came about when the British Empire and the Nigerian government cut off the food supply, the medical aid to the Biafran people during their civil war with Nigeria. So I'm going to bring the sister on so she could talk about it a little bit because I like to get perspectives from a sister's point of view. You know, we already, we, we got a lot of men, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Nandi Kanu and all the great freedom fighters, male freedom fighters. But I like to bring sisters into discussions because the sisters are the power because a lot of sisters died in the Biafran Nigerians civil war. And it's a lot of sisters who's leading the Biafran struggle. And, you know, I just want my people here in the United States of America to, you know, especially our women, especially the African sisters here in the, that's born here in America to understand why it's important for black women, African women, to be on the front lines of a true struggle of their people when their people are being genocided. So that's why I wanted to do this live real quick. It's not going to be real long, y'all, because the sister, you know, She's not going to be on here real long, so let me just bring her in. I'm bringing her in right now. Sister Lizzie, somebody that I, you know, have got to know over the last couple of years. You see what I'm saying? A powerful sister. So I'm going to just bring her on so she can talk about it a little bit and explain it to y'all. If this live act right, because you know this. Ah, here we go. <laughs> What's up, sis? What's up, sis? Hi, Kim. Good evening. Good How evening. How you doing? Good evening. Good evening. I'm, I'm great. Okay. I'm great. You know, I'm great. You know. How your day going? Good. You feeling I'm better? I'm pretty good. Good, good, yeah. good. And also to my people in the United States of America, if you don't know, this sister is a big fan of Tupac Shakur. talk about that a little bit but this this is about the Biafran people man because I want my people in the United States of America to get a better understanding of why I became an advocate and why many black Americans I don't like to use the term black Americans because a lot of us don't identify with that nationality but you know the Africans born in America why we should be supporting the Biafran, Biafran struggle and studying this genocide because this genocide happened to black people by other black people 
You feel me? So I just want our people to get understand that this can happen to us at any time. It can happen. So let me just ask you this. Uh, could you explain to the black people in America what is by African Heroes Day? Okay, first and foremost, um, my name is Lizzie Chimo Amanda. I'm from um, Imo State, a very province mm -hmm. of Finland. I'm based here in Diaspora. Um, today is an event that uh, we set aside uh, to honor our hero and heroines, uh, to talk about and to explain to our people what um, our fathers, our mothers, our grandfathers went through in the year 1967 to 1970. And July, to be precise, July 6th, to be precise, to January 1967. Yeah, our people was murdered uh, because then I was not born. But according to history that uh, have been unveiled to us, uh, they, taught, they taught us that a lot of things happened. They were, they were killed. You know, the young girls, they were marginalized. You know, they were raping. They were killing our young men, the soldiers. A lot of, a lot of my fathers and my mothers and my sisters they fought for the war. So then it was not easy at all. Uh, it was like a, a, a terrible, because they say it was a war, but to me, I, I right. took it to be a genocide. Because the, during the period, they, they, they murdered 3.5 million Biafra that was recorded. But I say to you that it's more than right, 3.5 right. million. Explain that. So um, today, we, we set aside to to mourn our funny hero and heroes, those who, who fought for us. I, I think um, it's, it's, it's a good thing. And, and today, we thank to Kabiyama that it's possible. And um, to my black brothers and sisters out there, I want to urge you all to wake up to join us on this because we all are one and we all are the same from the same root. Uh, because your father, my father, a lot of us know what happened um, during the years that um, they, 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 they sold up for slavery. Your fathers, your mother, they right. sold them out for slavery. And um, they, were, they were like in different parts of the world, America. Um, UK, every part of the world. So we are the black race and you all know the truth. So it's high time for us to wake up and um, join hands together to fight for the survival of the new Africa. Because Biafra right. is a new Africa. So that's right. what I exactly. Um, let me ask you this. Could you explain to the, you know, the new Africans in America, the black people in America, uh, the importance of females like you and the importance of the women who have sacrificed their life for Biafra all these years. Okay. Um, the point is that uh, we women, we joined in the fight because um, the fight was not only for the men alone. And uh, it was a serious one according to the history. And according to the late bit out of I've already read, the women also were involved in the in the killing because uh, they believe that if they should have much female, that they can begin to bear fruit and they can raise up again to right. have a new nation that was called Biafra. So that was the reason why they killed a lot of female. The female mostly was murdered because it was not easy at all for them to survive that period. So that's the reason why we, the female, we have decided not to keep quiet. And we have um, made a day, and we have already um, decided to join in the struggle. Joining the struggle is for us to be liberated because um, the female ones, we are the ones that suffer the pain the most. Well, sometimes when the men they get up, they get to get a lot of things from themselves. But we, the female, we have already been out from the out right. from the pictures due to some circumstances that surround us. We because we say we are women, and that's the reason why we women we have to wake up to fight because the fight it will benefit a lot of women at stake. So right, exactly. And to all my brothers and sisters here in the United States, of, United States of America, I would reference to you, please go look up the uh, Igbo women's revolution that took place also in Igbo land, which was a significant historical event of history that took place in Igbo land that also contributed to this struggle. It, it, I can't think of the name right now, but it's the, you know, the Igbo women rose up in large numbers in Igbo land at one point in the time. And there was a revolution that sparked off from the women of Biafra land, Igbo land. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And also, let me throw this in here before I move to the next question. 
Yeah. Uh, if you if you're in the United States of America, yeah. if you're in the United States okay. of America right now, the leader of the IPOB is now here in North America. He's in Georgia. So if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, go to go to go to Nandi Kanu's Twitter page and all his supporters' pages. If you want to get the information to come see him speak today, because he speaks today and tonight in a, in Atlanta, Georgia, go get that information off his page and go to the event and hear this great man speak so you can get a better understanding because he's here in North America right now as I speak in Georgia. So that, that brings me to my next question. Could you explain to the brothers and sisters of America who is Nandi Kanu? And what's his and what's his importance? Yeah. What's his importance to the Biafran struggle? Yeah, Master Nandikano, it's it's a great man, and um, and for me, I call right. him my Messiah of my time. He was Master Nandikano was the man who stop uh, who st uh, stand forth to pick up right. the new revolution uh, that was like abandoned for many years because uh, Dim Odmego Juku was our right. hero who fought for us. Uh, during those years, 1967 to 1970, before they, they, they joined us with force to agree in a marriage that we never began, that was called as One Nigeria. And all those years, um, everybody kept quiet. So it was only Mazin Nandikano, the great, my messiah right. of my time, my leader, and my mentor of today. A man who taught me what it takes to fight for freedom and for a woman, it's right for her to wake up and fight for what she believed. So Martin Anikano, I see him as a truthful man, and I see him as a honest man. And in the same time, I urge everybody, both in America, my black brothers, my sisters, those in America, it's time for us right. to rise up and see reasons with him that the reason for him to be clamoring for freedom that is right time for us to go home. Because I believe that basically you all are not enjoying there because it's not quite easy. You know, abroad because we have all the text in our home. So that's the reason why Martin Anikano, the great, my redeemer of my time, it's crying and it's calling everyone out. It's not only calling for us only. It's calling both for the people that they sold for slavery those years ago. So that's the reason why Martin Nani kind of have took it upon itself to wake everybody. And I hope and I believe that everybody's awoken. Because what is going on now, it's not funny at all. Because it's not all about the white race. White race doesn't accept us. They can never accept you as a black race. And no matter what you do, you can never exactly. them. Not even one, not even two, not even three. So that's the real so it's high time for us, but the black, those in America, those that say they are black America, you are not black American. You are Africa. That's the difference. Right. You are in Africa, and there is nothing you will do in it that the white will accept you. So I think it's high time for everybody, those that claim they are black American, for them to wake up and join for the restoration of our sovereign country, Biafra, for everyone to go home. It was me, in particular, I'm tired of here. Yeah, it's not my land. I'm not enjoying it. It's not funny for me. Not even one, not even twice. So exactly. That's what I'm going to say for now. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that point up because that's going to take me to my next question on um, uh, what is the IPOB. Well, let me explain this before I ask you that question. To my brothers and sisters in North America who are aware of the new African independence movement, the IPOB is a, another independence movement, a great organization and a movement that's fighting and struggling for those great Biafran people worldwide, not just in Africa, not just in, 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 in the zoo called Nigeria, but all the black, the black race period, the African race period globally, you know what I'm saying? The IPOB is another independence movement. One of the, matter of fact, the greatest movement of this time and period, because a lot of people got to understand it's different periods of time when different movements come forward to try to liberate Africa and try to liberate certain nations that's going to benefit those black people who are scattered all across the world. The black people are scattered all across the world who want to come back home. So let me just state that for the record. If you know who the new African independence movement is in North America, then you must get to know who IPOB is in Africa. Because this takes me back to the question. Okay, Marcus Garvey. A lot of y'all know who Marcus Garvey is. If you know what the Biafran flag is, which is red, black, green, with the sun on it, you see what I'm saying? That is inspired by the great Marcus Garvey, who, who brought forth the Pan-African flag, which I got on my neck right now, which is the red, black, and green flag color. And the shirt. The reason why I'm bringing up Marcus Garvey is that. Is this, I mean. 
is that we have great leaders that come along, like the Thomas Sankara, the um, um, Samara Michelle, all the great leaders, the freedom fighters of Africa. Nandi Kanu is that freedom fighter of this generation that we should be paying attention to as black people in America and all the black people scattered across the world. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up is that the struggle for independence and freeing an independent country in Africa has never stopped. This is why I want our black people in America and scattered across the world. I want y'all to get familiar with the Biafran struggle to support the Biafran, the Biafran struggle because like she just said, a lot of us, we're not from these lands, just like me. I'm not from, we're not from North America. We're not from South America. We're not from the Caribbean islands. Our homeland is Africa. Our ancestral land is Africa. Our ancestral land is Biafra. Biafra is what I call it. You see what I'm saying? So I'm saying this is that we, ha we don't have these, all these movements come along. Somebody always steps to the forefront. Biafra is stepping to the forefront to liberate land and to liberate a country in Africa that is theirs, that we can come home to. This is what internationalism is about. This is what pan-Africanism is about. This is what revolution is about. We must support all movements that are trying to free land and try to free a nation for us to come home to. So let me go to this next question. Who is IPOB? Explain IPOB to my people here in America. Well, IPOB is me and you. We make up IPOB. IPOB simply means the indigenous people of Biafra. And who are the indigenous people of Biafra? It's me and you, my other brothers as well. So I don't, I don't have much. Of... You. IPOB explained itself very, very well. I and you are the IPOB. Without us, exactly. And I'm glad. I'm glad you brought up that. I'm glad you broke down that name, uh, Indigenous People of Biafra, because I also want to make that point to my people here in America, to you know, the Black people of America, is that. You must understand what indigenous means. We all, if you're black and you're African, you are indigenous. So a lot of people don't understand that term and why a lot of African people use that term indigenous and why a lot of, even the native, even the native people of America, the native Indians here in America, they always tell you that you are indigenous to this world. So the point I'm making is that a lot of black people in America, you must understand that you are indigenous people. You are the original people. You are the original race. You are the original descendants of great people from Africa. So that's why you must start, over, you know, identifying with the term indigenous. Because, you know, we are indigenous. And Biafra is our indigenous land. It's our indigenous home. So, you know, I just wanted to make that point also. Um, I really don't want to talk about this because this, this is going to my next question. I really don't want to talk about this guy too much, but I have to talk about him because... Uh, so my people in America can understand what the Nigerian government is doing to our great brothers and sisters there in Nigeria in the Biafra land. Could you explain to the people in America who is who is the terrorist um, Muhammad Buhari? Uh, Sorry, the network was a bit uh, bad. Uh, that takes me to the answer again. Um, wow. Muhammad Buhari, that I know, is late and is gone and was buried without any further or any kind of burial ceremony. And they brought a man from 
and Sudan, Djibouti and Sudan. Mm. So that's the reason why when we, the Biafra, the indigenous people of Biafra, we wake up, we talk about our redemption, we, we preach about it, the targets to be terrorists. As long mm. as I'm concerned, Nigeria as a whole is under terrorized, under terrorists, and they are under oppression of the Fulani huntsmen, killing people and tagging us. Your connection, your connection kind of breaking up. Call my phone, so sorry about yeah, that's okay. I know, I know it's kind of yeah. breaking up. But like she was saying, let me piggyback yeah. off what she was saying. Let me piggyback off what she was saying. Um, uh, Muhammad Buhari, uh, this cat that just won the real election. Well, he didn't win. Let me clear that file because I was about to make a mistake on that. He didn't win the election because we all know the election, the Nigerian election, is a rigged election. You know what I'm saying? It's not a it's not a legal, uh, fair, uh, democracy. The Nigerian election is not a. Ahmed Buhari is the the cat that's in Nigeria right now is not Muhammad Buhari. What they what she was basically saying is that Muhammad Buhari, the real Muhammad Buhari, uh, died, and and the guy that they got in Nigeria right now is a fraud. He was a he was a guy that was brought from Sudan. You see what I'm saying? A lookalike. And then if you know anything about the, the doubles, you know what I'm saying? The doubles have been a part of, you know, politics um for for, for centuries, you know, generations. There have always been doubles and lookalikes. Saddam Hussein had a lookalike. Um uh, uh, Omar Gaddafi had a lookalike. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not using those brothers or putting those brothers in the same sentence as the terrorist Muhammad Buhari, but just to make you understand that the, a lot of these so-called politicians and these fake leaders, they have doubles. They have lookalikes. You see what I'm saying? To come amongst the people to deceive the people. The sister dropped off the uh, uh off the live because her connection was breaking up. I'm going to try to bring her back in. Sister, if you if you still on here, if you still on here, you know what I'm saying? Try to come back on here. I might just bring somebody else on here to talk about Biafra. Let me see something. Let me see if I can bring somebody else on here real quick. Because the sister uh, broke off the line. Her connection is messing up. Let me try to bring this brother on here. See if he can talk a little something about it. This is, this is Biafra Heroes Day. By the way, May 30th. This day is observed every year on May 30th. You should get educated on the, on this topic. You see what I'm saying? Get get educated on this genocide, my black people here in North America. You need to you need to understand that we must support the Biafran struggle. If you're looking for true freedom, true independence, and you're tired of being genocided by the European and the white man of America, then you should get in the struggle and join the struggle and support the people of Biafra. I just brought this brother in. What's up, brother? How you doing, bro? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you very much. I'm good. How you doing, bro? I'm very good. Thank you very much. That's good. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, since I brought you on this live, man, I, you know, I know you want to speak on the on the Biafran Heroes Day and the memorial and the commemoration of those great Biafran brothers and sisters and, and children that were murdered. So I'm just going to let you speak your piece, brother. Go ahead and explain to my brothers and sisters here in, the, in America why they should support y'all and, and what is the Biafran Heroes Day and why black people in America should support the Biafran struggle. Go ahead. I'm going to let you speak. Thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Obin Nachinenye Ibemero Kenze. I came from... Um, that on the local government, in most states. Uh, the issue of Biafra, the question of Biafra is about our collective survival on this planet Earth. Right. As long as you are a black man, as long as you are African, right. it is very, very important that we all come together to ensure that justice is done 
ensure that the people that are oppressed right. are liberated. Right. Because we all have shared common destiny and we are we have all been victims of uh, this global injustice. We are we are all in the same basket. Right. If you are African, if you are black, wherever you find yourself on this planet Earth, it is very, very important for your own good, for your survival, to join what, come closer, listen to what we are saying, right. try to understand what is going on. What we are doing is we are fighting for survival. 3.5 million, that is, that is a... Uh, being economical with the real numbers of what happened, 3.5 million people were murdered within 30 months. Right. Nobody on this planet Earth is talking about it. No government is talking about it. Sure no, not. Nobody talks about it. Nobody. We all celebrate every time we talk about um, Holocaust, we talk about uh, Armenia, we talk about all other genocide that we are committed exactly but what happened in biafra land within 30 months over 3.5 million mostly children were murdered why we are starved to death for no just reason why so when we are crying when we are protesting when we are talking it is very very important that People give attention to really, really understand what we are trying to say. What we are trying to say is that our land we are taking over right. by the British colonizers. We were murdered to submission. Right. And from since that very day till today, we have not had the, the opportunity. We have we have we don't have any form of right to decide what happens in our land. What, we don't have the right to make laws that governs us. Why? In Nigeria, the constitution that is being run as a democratic constitution was constitution that was given to the people by military. They, 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 they said, we the people, but nobody was there when they formulated the constitution. Why? And this is what they have been using to marginalize and kill the people every day. When we come out to protest, to demand for our common rights, mm -hmm. we are killed. We have been, from, from 1914, the colonizers came to Nigeria. They yes. have been killing, yeah, explain it. they have been killing the people of Biafra nonstop, nonstop. Right. Till so this very day, people are still dying. Till so this very day, people are still being murdered on the streets. I, I, I'm, I'm glad nothing you, has changed i'm glad you brought that point up. i want to ask you this question um well not really a question but could you explain could you explain to the black people here in north america and the united states of america who are the fulani's her herdsmen and what and, and explain to them what the fulani herdsmen have been doing to buy African people uh these people they are they are the colonizers proxies in africa Right. They are the they are the people who Europeans have always used to subjugate and kill Africans, to enslave Africans. These are their proxies from time immemorial, from the days of slavery. These are the people who their chief acting trade was to kidnap and steal blacks and sell to Europeans. These are the people who enslaved all of Africa. Right. Wherever they are found, this has been their job. Right. They are the ones, when the British government left Nigeria, British government handed over governance to Flanese. Right. Since then, Flanese, they have the exclusive rights to rule Nigeria. In fact, they are called born to rule. Okay. So, whatever you see happening to Nigeria, wherever you see Nigeria is, and Africa in general, wherever you see, 
whatever kind of development that is coming to Nigeria, whatever kind of uh, 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 mismanagement, right. misgovernance that is coming to Nigeria comes directly from the Fulanese. Right. They are the ones who has kept Africans and blacks, especially in Nigeria, in West Africa, they are the ones who have kept blacks our people, they are the ones who have subjugated us. They have. The, they are the ones who destruction of our land. They are doing right. all these things with the help of the British government. Exactly. British government gives them free rights to do whatever they decide to do. Whatever they choose to do is what they do. Nobody, nobody... Nobody argues with them because the British is always with them to supply them whatever kind of weapon and diplomatic cover they need. Exactly. Right. So these are their proxies in Africa. So let me ask you this question. Uh, how can I put this? Uh, like today... Let me know, how can I put it? Like to, like today in Nigeria, uh, what what is the what what is the climate like as far as the murdering that these people are doing to uh by African people and Igbo land people? And 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 explain to my people in North America the, the resources, the massive resources like oil. And, uh, and how all these things play a role in that genocide because all that, you know, from what I researched and from what I've been taught, Biafra land is rich with oil. So could you explain that to the people on how that plays a role into y in y'all genocide? Uh, well, uh, the, all the oils in Nigeria is exclusively Biafra. Right. Yep. All of them, 100%, 100% yep. is That's what I... exclusively Biafran, Biafran oil. Right. So what is what is going on is that the British government wants to control this oil. They want to always take oil without paying for the oil. They have been taking oil without paying. So uh, during the 1966-67 when the, there was political uh, disturbances in Nigeria and um, the people of Biafra were, were killed in their thousands. Right, right. By the Fulanese and their friends in Nigeria. Uh, the Biafran uh, military governor then, Odume Bojuku, he decided to secede from Nigeria. Right. Because of the massive killings and injustice. Uh, that was the first uh, declaration of uh, Biafran independence. Mm -hmm. In 30th May, 19. That is actually what we are remembering today, 30th May, right. 1967, yep. right. when Biafra was declared as a nation. Uh, what happened was that the British government, with, uh, with the help of their proxy in Nigeria, which is the Fulanese, right. came down to... This is... We are being killed now... From 1967 to this day, we are being killed just because the British government and the Fulanese want to maintain the control of Biafran oil. That is why we are being killed. Exactly. Nothing more, nothing less. Exactly. Nothing more, nothing less. We are not dying. What they want is to wipe out the whole of Biafrans in order to take over. Because what is deposited on the land of Biafra, the greatest all you reserve in all of Africa right. is in Biafra land. It sure is. It sure is. So what they are fighting for is to eliminate all of Biafrans, which they are succeeding in doing. In some part of Biafrans, they have destroyed a lot of communities. And they are continue as I'm talking to you now, they are, they are, they are, they are killing. People are dying. People right. are being maimed. People are being, lives are being destroyed. Right. That's the point I want. I the want my people. army, the police, the customs, everybody is involved in this genocide. It is right. ongoing. This is not what happened before. It is what is happening now. People are dying. People are being destroyed. House, homes are being massacred. Right. Women, men, and children are being destroyed. As we are talking, people are dying. Right. 
That and that and that brings me to my next question to you is this. Explain to my people here in the United States of America the reason that y'all are fighting for a referendum and explain what a referendum is to because a lot of my people in North America don't know what a referendum is and, and why y'all asking for a referendum. Uh, it is very, very important that the people of America understand exactly what we are doing. Because America, United States of America, they uh, pride themselves to be the bane of democracy in the world. Right. What we are asking is for a democratic process so that the people will determine who they are, where they belong, where they want to be. This thing has never been done. What we are, where we are living is called Nigeria, Niger area, the area of niggers. Right. This is a concoction of British. They brought people. In Nigeria, we have over 500 tribes. Right. For example. So how can you, how can one find his or her identity in this kind of setup? So what we are asking for is United Nations, United States of America, the free world, the people that pride themselves to be the democratic powerhouse of the world. Right. To come to our head, what we need is to have a democratic process so that people can determine who they are, where they want to belong, what they want to do with themselves, who they want to associate with. Right. We are being forced to live in a climate, in a situation, in a, in a country where somebody from um, any northern part of Nigeria, from the Fulanese, when I speak, they don't understand what I'm saying. Right. We don't have, we don't have nothing in common. No. You and I, we understand ourselves. You, are, you, you were born and raised in the United States of America, but when I speak, you do understand what I'm saying. Right. They don't understand what I'm saying. As I am conversing with you now, it is impossible. It is practically impossible to converse with a, a flanny man the exactly. way I'm talking with you. Exactly. They I don't understand. understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. So how can we form a cohesive society with people like that? Right. They don't believe in inclusion. They believe in exclusivity, that they are born to rule. They are the top. They are the king, and no one, no one else is. So why should we continue to associate ourselves with them? Exactly. What we are asking for is to be allowed to determine our future, to determine our destiny. Exactly. To, we are just asking the freedom to be who we are. That's all. Right. We are not asking for nothing that doesn't belong to us. We are asking for what is ours. Right. Let us govern ourselves. Let us determine ourselves. Let us decide how we want to be, how, what we want to do with our lives. Right. We don't have electricity where I come from. Electricity is impossible. We don't have, we don't have running water. We don't have. And these things are not impossible to have. There are a lot of technologies that are, can enable us to achieve these things. But before we can, before I can bring electricity to my community, I have to first go to Abuja and take permission, right. which is practically impossible because they are not going to allow me to do what I want to do in my land. Right. We are not free. We are slaves. Right. And this is 21st century. United States of America is the land of the free. Quote, this is, supposed this is to be. what they claim. This is what they supposed claim. To be. Supposed this to be. is what they're supposed to be. And this kind of thing is happening where, where we've, walked, we've walked about all over the world. All, all the embassies of the world, they know what we are doing. They know who we are. We have been knocking on the doors of all the governments of this world to exactly. come to our head. Exactly. So that, 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 that takes me to this next question I want to ask you. Why... why Okay, how can I put it? Why do you think the United the United Nations and, and all these embassies in the U.S. and all these type of people? Why why do you think they haven't like like really uh, how can I put it? Haven't helped y'all with this referendum? <sighs> there are a lot of a lot of theories and um, ideas. You know, Nigeria, Nigeria is rich right. by Biafran oil. Exactly. Nigeria is massively rich. 
and a lot of money is involved. Yep. Nigerian government, they have been going about bribing every, everyone we've come across. They, they, they pump money everywhere and they, they are always ready to bribe. And this is what they are known. Yep. And um, this idea that black life does not really, 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 when it comes to it, black life does not really, really matter. Exactly. Our cries, our tears, and our sorrows, our pains has not been really felt. Yep. People are not really appreciating what is it is that we are passing through. Mm -hmm. And the United Nations, the United States of America, they have not really stand up to the obligations. They have not really done what they should be doing. Right. They owe humanity a debt. Yep. They owe, they owe a lot. They owe a lot. They owe a lot. Uh, well, that, that's basically all I have to really. Uh, that's all I really basically have to ask you because I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to let a few other people come on this live real quick. So I thank all you, right. bro I thank you, brother, for coming on. And thank you very much. And, and, thank you very much. And explaining that to my people here in America because my people in America, they don't understand, man. They don't. They don't get it. They, 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 they need to they need to understand uh, and they need to wake up because uh, our fight is actually your fight exactly and that's, that's you, you you can never you can never have your freedom unless we are collectively free exactly exactly we are collectively still under slavery it right. doesn't matter what anybody tells you or what you tell yourself as long as Collectively, we are not free. Nobody's free. Nobody's free. Collectively. So it's Nobody. very, very important we come together and shame the devil. Right. Right. So I'm, 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 I'm going to let you go. And thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you for coming on. Thank you, bro. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. I'm going to try to bring somebody else on real quick. Matter of fact, Hold on, let me let me try to bring my sister back on real quick. Oh, there she sorry, go. I, sorry, I can I lost signal then. It was maybe due to some network issues. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, sorry. It, it's, I'm here. It, yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, I wanted to bring you back on real quick because, you know, I, like I said, I wanted to, you know, talk to the sisters of Biafra land. So, um, let me ask you, let me ask you this question also. Is like, how can I put it? Matter of fact, could you explain to the people here who was General Ajuku? Because a lot of my people don't know who General Ajuku was. Because I, I, I want to kind of like, I want to kind of like pay homage to those who, who was fighting for Biafra. Okay, um, General Juku is a is a is a is a hero. He's a superman. General Juku, as I said before, is a superman. He's a hero. He is one of those who stand and um, who who stood so strong uh, to fight for for us and to 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 to. And it just those who are willing to fight because then it was not easy because the, the, the operation was so much and um, the, the, there was no way we could have got a weapon to fight back because it was not only the, 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 the Nigeria government, which we know as the Republic today, it was not. Oh, sorry about that, man. Sisters, the sister uh, connection keeps dropping. Uh, let me let me try to bring somebody else on. Let me see. I'm gonna try to add somebody else to the live. Sister, the line keep breaking up.
I'm trying to bring somebody else on the line. Uh, my, sorry about that, bro, because, you know, I was trying to, you know, I was trying to talk to the sister, you know, her, her connection is breaking up. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to bring people in. Hold on. Oh, now here she go again. Hold on. Y'all pardon me for a minute. You know, I'm trying to bring somebody else on alive. Trying to bring the sister back also. And shout out to all the bathroom people, man, across the globe, across the world that's commemorating this, this historic day. And, uh, you know, paying homage to all those that were genocided on this day, man. You know, like, I wanted to do this live because I want to connect our brothers and sisters globally in Biafra land, you know what I'm saying, so we could try to unify and try to get a better understanding of each other's struggle. That's something that I'm working on, you know what I'm saying, as I continue to, you know, build and study, you know, uh, the Biafran struggle and also trying to introduce the new African independence movement and our struggle to people in Africa because I know a lot of our people don't know let me, let me just talk about this real quick because I know a lot of my brothers and sisters in Biafra land and all other parts of Africa and all over the globe, they don't know about our struggle here in the North America. They just think black people here in North America are just some people who just letting white people rule over us and letting white people govern us. No, we have a movement here also, which is the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa. And, you know, I tag the group into this... Uh, this live, which is the New African Independence Movement. The New African Independence Movement have been fighting and struggling for over 300 years in, in North America for independence and nationhood and self-determination, just like the Biafran Nation. Just like the Biafran Nation was called the Republic of Biafra, the black people here in North America, in the United States of America, born, born in the United States of America, we also have our own movement and our own nation called the Republic of New Africa. I want y'all to get familiar with that movement because we're also here fighting for independence, land, and self-determination also. That's been going on for the last 50 years. The Republic of New Africa, the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa, turned 50 years last year. So all this type of struggling and this independence movements came into existence around the same time. Just like the Republic of Biafra came into existence in 1967, the Republic of Af I mean, the Republic of New Africa and North America came into existence in 1968. So we have an identical movement. We have identical nations that are fighting and struggling for the same thing, which is to free the black race and the free black people globally. And the free new Africans is what we call ourselves here in North America. Like y'all call yourself the Africans, we call ourselves new Africans. And we know that our ancestors were brought here from Biafra land 400 years ago in the transatlantic slave trade. So we are family. We are family. You see what I'm saying? We are brothers and sisters. We are Biafrans. Y'all are new Africans. We are one nation. We are one people fighting for independence, fighting for nationhood on the continent of Africa and here in the United States of America. Because also check this out. For that 400 years of slave labor, that took place when they brought those Biafrans here to labor on these slave plantations in North America. Guess what, Biafran people? That's y'all land also. Because your ancestors slaved from sunup to sundown, building the country you see today, which is the United States of America. They died building this country. You feel me? Like, this country was built off of Biafran and other African slaves' backs. So, this is your land also. You see what I'm saying? Just like here in Virginia. We have our own Igbo village, our own Biafran village. This is y'all land also. Y'all helped build the United States of America. So y'all should also be trying to help us get back what they took from our collaborative ancestors that we share. 
which is the hard slave labor, the land they stole from our ancestors who were enslaved here on this land. This is our land also. I want our buy from people to also understand that this is your land also. Your people were enslaved on this land. They worked and built up this land. You feel me? So I want y'all to understand it also. I don't know what's up with the sister's connection, but her connection is not coming through. So let me try to go to somebody else real quick. I don't know what Facebook is doing, but Facebook is not allowing me to, right now, it's not allowing me to bring people into this live. And you know why that is going on, because you know Facebook is connected to the, you know, the power structure that's not trying to allow us to get these voices out and to get these messages out. Messages out. Hello. Greens. 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 Good evening, brother. How you doing, bro? How you doing, bro? I'm doing great. That's good. That's, That's good. good. That's good. I like what you're doing. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. that. Yeah. yeah. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, you, you, so know, you, can, you know, you can... This is this live is from Heroes, Heroes Day. Day. Yeah. So you can, you can, so you can, speak, you can speak your piece. Or, uh, or, you know, uh, you know explain, explain what's, going, what's on going on in Nigeria, in Nigeria to our people, to our people, here, in people here in North America. America. Okay, um, what's going on today is we are remembering our heroes, uh, people who fought and died for us to be free. You know, this happened um, between 19, 1967 to 1970. Right, right. Yeah, people fought and died for us to leave today and... Um, they were massacred. It's not just a civil war, but it was a genocidal war. Great point. That, Great point. that um, Nigeria and the allies, you know, team up and kill and massacre people of the old eastern called Biafra. Right. So right. today we are gathering all over the world to remember them and to pay them our respect because they are the reason why we are living today. Because without them, we wouldn't have had life today. And we are at the same time, IPOB, uh, we are waking the consciousness of our people to remember these people that have died for us. You know, uh, last previous years, like about seven, six years ago, this remembrance has never been taking place. Right, right. Until uh, our great leader, Mazin Nandikado, came on board and started giving us information and was giving us uh, lectures saying the truth and speaking about Biafra and what happened. So everybody now rose up and we declared this very day, May 30th, to remember these people. And ever since then, we have been remembering them and we are also been agitating for the restoration of this country called of this nation called biafra right so this right. is what we've been doing for for years this is what we've been doing for over five six seven years right now although uh, some people have come on board previously before uh our, Mazi, our leader Mazi nandikalo came on board okay right Right. They have tried, they have, some people have tried and most of them fell on the way, they never continued. But uh, today we are still continuing in the same spirit through the, our leader Mazin Nandikano, try to wake the consciousness of our people, to let them know the reason right. and the... Uh, right. The, the reason we should go back to where we came from, the reason we should be able to live uh, as a people and worship one God and um, and observe our culture, you right. know? Right. In that construction, we find ourselves called Nigeria. We were, never, we, were never, we were never part of it. You know, our great-grandfather was never part of it. Exactly. You know, exactly. we were never part of it. And they forced us 
together to be together as a country called Nigeria. So we never agreed to that. And that was why the reason our 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 great leader, my, my gentle soul, rest in peace, uh Odumebo Juku, that was why he 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 told the people of Nigeria that they should allow us, you know, develop at our own pace. You know, when they went to Aburi Court, they reached an agreement and they came back. Only for the president then uh, um, go on yeah. to come yeah. back and do different things that I agreed in a bully court. So that was what led to the genocidal war, uh, the Nigeria method against Biafra. And today we want to go back to where we have to, the way we, we used to be. We want, we, want to, we want to own our freedom, we want to live our own life, we want to develop at our own peace, we want to, you know, worship god in our own way you know right, we want to right. uphold our culture okay that is that is what we are asking we know we are asking the the, the great nation of the world today to come you know to our aid to come to see you know reasons with us why we want to be on our own but we know it will not it's not going to happen we know it's not going to happen we know it's not going to happen because we are the children of the most high god Okay, right. we are right. children of the Most High God, so it's not going to happen. But I know by the power of Yahweh, the Most High God, we will go, We are going to have our freedom, right. whether they right. like it or not. So, and I love what you're doing, and I will also say our black, our African, uh, American brothers all over the world, our African brothers and sisters all over the world. They need to rise up. They need to come up. They need to speak up. We need right, to speak right. with one voice because right, we are right. all one. We are all yep, one. Yep. If Biafra is free today, definitely black race all over the universe will be free. Right. That right. is certain. That is certain. That is, there's no two ways about that. If Biafra is free today, definitely black race all over the universe, we are going to be free. If right, what right. is going on in this war today against black race, you will know it's unimaginable. It's it's way, way beyond human comprehension. So right, right. we need to speak up with one voice. We need to come together as one people. You know? I'm glad you brought that up. Because that was one of the main reasons why we want to be Because all these years... years because I, 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 I was born in, born in the United, born in the United States, States of America. Okay. So, so by me doing, by me my, doing ancestry, my ancestry through the horrific, through the horrific slave, trade, slave trade, that made that me, made that, me empowered that empowered me, me to overstand, to overstand that, that. I must use I my must voice, use my voice to, uh, to speak, uh, speak for the liberation, for the liberation of Biafra land. Yeah. Uh, you, and, know, because, you know, because this is not my this home. This is not my home. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, so that's why. That's why I, I, I try to I try to encourage not just not, not just the, not black, people the black people in the United, in the United States, States of America, but African, but African people, people globally. globally. Yeah. Why they why must, they speak, must up speak up on this on genocide, this genocide in by Africa. And I, I want to ask you this. Could you explain, Could you explain, to, the explain to the people? About the, about the, the, um, the um, how can I put it? Can I put it? About, about the starvation, the, starvation, the, famine, the famine that took place, that took place during, that, during civil that civil war. And about the, and about the, the, kids, the kids, the children, the children that, died, that from died from hunger. Okay, about the starvation that took place uh, during, the, during the genocidal war, against Biafran people, you know, one of the weapons of war is starvation. So when, when they knew that Biafran has come to resist them in their genocidal mission against, against the people of Biafra, they had to bring the, they had to bring uh, the weapon of war, which is starvation, they blocked, they blocked every means for us to get food, to be able, you know, to survive, 
to stand against, to resist against their genocide against us. Right. You know? Right. So when they did this, we had no. They the, the knew that when they do this, that we will have no other option can than to give up, yep. than to surrender. Yep. You know, being starvation, being one of the weapon of war. Right. So right. they triggered it. You know, through the help of uh, through the help of Britain, through the help of some world power. You know, they blocked every means which we are supposed to receive aid. Right, you know, right. aid we're no longer coming in, and the people of Biafra, most especially the children, you know, they were going, they were starving, and they were not since they were not getting any aid, they were not getting any food, and you know, this this thing called Kwashiorkor sure start cropping up, and they were all, you know dying one after the other like a chicken you right, know right. So that was what happened that was what happened about the starvation of our of our people of biafra during that genocidal war so they really 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 you know dead with our, our our people that then you know but this time around if we're gonna if we're gonna go to war we're not gonna allow them do that we're exactly. not gonna allow them do that we're not gonna allow them do that because this is 21st century, it's right. not right. it's not 1967 to 1970 anymore. So right. that right. is not going to happen anymore, and that is why we are trying to call the consciousness of the world powers, the leaders that 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 are in this in this world, so right. that they can right. know what is going on, and and because of this, you know. The the, the the genocidal war has never been mentioned in mm. any way. You know, the only person that tried to mention it is uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Nagaihal. You know, mm. every one of their remembrance, one of their uh, commemoration they were doing, he tried to mention it, I think that was last year, or there oh, about. So, and I don't know why the world, I don't know why the world kept deft ear or kept silent about this genocidal war that was meted against Biafra. That is what I don't understand. Right, right. It's not that it's not like the world, it's not like the, 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 the powerful countries are not hearing about what we are saying. But right, they are right. choosing to keep adamant and deft ear to our cry. Right. You know? Right. So and that is it, it is very painful. I know they are not gonna do anything but by the grace of the Most High God, Elohim, we, the people of Biafra, we are going to get our freedom, whether they like it or not, whether they support it or not. And I know it's not going to take time. Right. Right. Let me take it back off of that. that. What the brother, what was, the brother talking was talking about, about when he was talking, when he was about, talking the about the salvation as being a as form. Being a form of a strategy, of a strategy and warfare. And warfare. So let me explain, so let me explain to, my it to my people. What he just what said, he just said about how they about cut, how they off, cut the off the aid to buy and the people and couldn't, the people get, couldn't food, get food, medical, medical aid, aid, things that are things nature, that to, nature survive. to survive. Yeah. And all those and precious babies, babies and those precious, and those kids, precious died kids died from hunger. From hunger. Let me explain, let me to, explain my it to my people. This is, this is, this is, this is similar, similar to what's going, to what's on, going on in Venezuela, Venezuela. right mm -hmm. now. Right now, yeah, that's true. Like when the like government, the government, this is called this sanctions. Is called sanctions. Mm -hmm. And what a sanction, what a sanction is, is, they cut off they cut all, off your, all aid. your aid. Yeah. All, and, all and what your aid, what your aid is, is, is the resources, the, resources, the materials, the, materials, the things, the you, things need you need to survive. To survive. Yeah. As a people, as a people. So this is what's so going, this is on, what's in going on in Haiti. Venezuela. And other, and other countries that are fighting, that are fighting to be independent, to be independent mm -hmm. and have their, and own, have their own nation. This yeah. is what the United, what States, the United have States have done. Britain, Britain um, um, all the imperialists conquering, conquering nations. nations. This is what this they, they do. What they do. Nigeria, Nigeria, all of them. All of them. They will cut, they your, will aid cut your aid off. off. Your supplies, your supplies off. off. And will starve, and will you, starve to you to death. This is a strategy, this is a strategy of warfare. Of warfare. See, a lot, see, a lot of my people in America, they think they, they, think so, they good, live right? so good, right? 
they don't they understand their oppression to the point that they don't realize that this government right here, right here, the U.S. The U.S. can cut our aid off. Our supplies off. Our supplies off. Shit, they've been killing us. For 400, for 400 years, years. Mm. since our ancestors since our were born, and, 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 and their police, their police enforcement, enforcement still killing, still our, people. killing our people mm. every day, every day yeah. in the streets, in of, the America. streets of America. So I, I'm going to use the bad genocide, genocide as an example, as an example, as an example to my people, to my people like, like you need to pay attention. You need, mm. to, wake you need to wake up. You need to wake up. You need to support them because at any given time, we can be cut off. So if so, if bad Africa is not free. We don't have no, we place, don't have to no go place to go to. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm so saying? That's so why that's I want why I want this day, this day, May 30th, May 30th, to be a, to be a, 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 learning, a, a learning lesson, a wake-up call, wake call, call to my mm. people, to my in, people North in North America mm -hmm. that you live that in too living too you think you live in too living too come. But these white but folks, these white don't, folks don't care about you. They'll cut you off. They'll cut you off. Yeah. So I need my people in America to understand the African genocide. Because this is because like, this, in this time, in this period, time period, that is the work that is the work genocide, genocide that, mm -hmm. took place that took place on black people. On black people. You yeah. see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So I, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to just let you, let you um, um, close out, close out with, your, with your, some more comments, comments, comments so I can try to so bring somebody, somebody else, somebody else on real quick. All right. Um, what I'm going to say is that you made mention of something that just triggered my heart, my mind. Right. You know. Right. Um. Where you guys find your why where you guys find yourself today? The system there was was not made for black Africans. Right, right. The system there was not made for black Africans. So at any moment, like what you say, they could they can cut you off, they can cut you off, and this is why this is why this is that is that is why it is important that we get Biafra. That is why that is important. That every African nation, black nation get their freedom so that whenever you guys I cut off you can have a place to return home to. Right. Like right. recently Ghana Ghana just declared uh, their country open to any African, black American, wherever yeah. you yeah. are from the face of the air. If you want to come back, you want to look you're looking for a home place to call a home, just come back to Ghana. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They they really did a great thing there. So a lot of people Black Africans, they are returning back to Ghana to make Ghana their home. So this is what we, this is what we are agitating for. This is what Biafra wants. This is what we are calling for us to be free. Because right, definitely, right. if we are free, the whole black nation over the face of those edge are automatically free. Right, so I right. want, I want our black African brothers and sisters all over the world. To come together and thank you for bringing me on. I really appreciate what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Right you. On. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. grace to your able. Hey, hey. All right, thanks. Okay, so sorry about the network. So there sorry. She goes. She's back. She's back. She's back. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I understand. It's okay. The signal, the signal will be you. messing up. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. It's not my fault yeah, because maybe sometimes yeah. um, the network sometimes want to obstruct maybe Facebook or I don't know. Uh, right. Some stupid idiot tried to report the brokers today. Um, sorry right. because you were asking me about Chukwemeka uh, or Dumegojuku before yeah. I left the brokers. Um, talking about Chukwemeka or Dumego Juku, um, he is our number one superhero before we have a uh, Nandekan today. Chukwemeka or Dumego Juku on the 4th of November 1933 to 26, 2000, um, 26 November 2011 was a military right. officer and politician who served the eastern region of Nigeria. In 1966, and the leader of the Breakaway Republic of Biafra, 
kind of breaking up again. Can you hear me? You're breaking up again. The sister. I'm going to try to bring her back in. But what she was speaking on, she was speaking on General Juku. General Juku was the first leader who declared uh, the Republic of Biafra and bringing Biafra into existence. So she's speaking on the great uh, General uh, Juku. And a lot of, uh, you know, let me just speak on this for my brothers and sisters in North America and Biafra land, is that a lot of people don't know that General Juku, he did a lot of studying and he had a lot of information on the struggles of black people and the black people history here in the United States of America. Like he has, he has a whole speech talking about, you know, the brothers and sisters and my people here in North America, and United States of America, joining in with the Biafran struggle. But also this is a twist to it. There's a lot of things that a brothers, a lot of brothers and sisters don't know is that general Juku, he knew about the great freedom fighters of the United, you know, of, of the ancestors who fought in slavery. Like the Nat Turners, the Gabriel Process, the Denmark VC, also on this day in history, it, 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 man, it's so crazy and divine how our histories are so connected because we are one people. You know what I'm saying? Is that Denmark VC, a great freedom fighter of the, of the slave periods of slavery here in the United States of America, a revolutionary, Denmark VC of South Carolina, was fighting to free our people here in North America. And um, that, that, that revolution and that slave rebellion was, was snitched on today, on this day in history, on May 30th. And that's crazy how that aligns with the Biafran Heroes Day. Then Marvisi, slave rebellion, was snitched on today to try to free our people here in North America. But what I was saying is the great General Juku, he knew of all this great history of the slave rebellions in North America, of the slaves here in North America who was fighting to get back to Africa who was fighting to free this land here in, in, here in North America and to start our own nation here in North America also. So General Juku has a whole article, a whole essay about black people trying to fight for independence here in North America or trying to get back home to Biafra and to fight to free Biafra or to free some kind of African land over there in Africa. You see what I'm saying? For our people here in North America to come back home to. You see what I'm saying? Or to, you know, help us free the land here. This is why we say free the land here in North America. Free the land. We must have land. Bathroom people must have land. Black people here in America must have land. If we don't get no land, we cannot determine our own destinies. We cannot determine our own lives. You see what I'm saying? So all those great brothers and sisters of Biafra land who died, who were sacrifices, you know what I'm saying? To bring into existence true freedom, true sovereignty. You see what I'm saying? True nationhood. We must remember them. We must call upon them. Because this is another thing that we tend to forget. Those ancestors that died, those 3.5 million Biafrans that died, they are still with us, people. We still can call upon our ancestors to help us fight this struggle and to help free our people globally. Because let's remember, this is a global fight. This isn't, this isn't just a Biafran fight for Biafran. This is a global fight for the black race, like the great brother said earlier, and the great sister always st keeps stating, this is for African people globally. You see what I'm saying? This is why we must support Biafra and a Biafran referendum, a Biafran plebiscite for, to, to restore the nation that they already had. I see, a lot of people, my people in America don't understand is this, and a lot of people don't understand, period, is that Biafra was already a nation before Nigeria. Nigeria is the new nation. They're not the original nation. Republic of Biafra, the Biafran people, the Biafran nation is the original nation of that land. Nigeria, the Nigerian places are European contraptions. They were created by the British. You see what I'm saying? Nigeria. Uh, the Niger, all that type of stuff, that is a European contraption. By Africa, the original, 
the indigenous. This is all on the maps, the colonial maps, the, uh, the colonization maps. Uh, every European colonial map that you see before Nigeria came into existence, Biafra was on that map. Biafran people were already in that land, the Igbo nation. Let me just put that out there. The Igbo nation, a lot of people tend to forget that Biafran is the Igbo nation. Igbo nation and Biafran nation is the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, a lot of people tend to try to separate the two and a lot of them live that way, but they are one nation of people. They're one nation of people. Let me try to bring my sister back in one more time. You know what I'm saying? Because this live was about her. It's about her. Yeah, I'm trying to tap you back in now, sis. Let me see. I'm trying to tap you back in. Hold on. Trying to bring the sister. The sister connection is, is bad, but trying to bring her in so she can close oh, out. Okay. I want to let her close out. <laughs> so sorry about that. Okay, so everything okay. Um, it's like sometimes they don't want us. To talk it's okay. To, it's okay. Don't I know. Want I, our generation. I, they don't want us to. Know. I know. I know. And then I, they then, don't want us to know at all about our history. The yeah. Problem. Then a lot of we gotta do. Even up to date, they don't teach us history. Yeah. And a they lot don't of teach us history. Do we don't know how the history was. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook doing it too. Facebook is knocking you off the connection yeah. because they don't want us to talk yeah, about right. the Bible. Yeah, I understand. Heroes Day. But go ahead. Go but ahead. We must talk about Biafra because. Yeah, go go ahead yeah. and finish it. So talking about yeah. Juku, I was yeah, I was talking about Juku before they they, 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 yeah. they, they call it off a little bit, but nevertheless we'll ride on. So I was like explaining about um the breakaway republic was the, the same reason why uh, and the same reason why and the country today that we have uh, the Messiah we have today of our own time, the same uh, uh, that that fought before 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 he was before he he he, he died in in, 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 in and eleven before he died, so the, the, the same cause that Ojuku and uh, sorry Ojuku fought those years, that was the same thing that we're still on today. And that is very important that we must continue because exactly. those days we never fought all alone. We, 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 we fought with only ourselves, but the so called Damnable Zoological Republic and the, 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 the Russian and the Egyptian and the so Britain. Which is their colonial master? Ah, the three people that we fought. So it's still a problem, and we, we, we fought them. It was a, fought, a fight that they thought were gonna last for three months, and the fight lasted right. three good years. And in that due process, in that due process, we are the only one that was producing all the things, all the weapon that we used during those years. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say in this regard is that we, the Biafran, they know what they are trying to prevent because they know that if we arise today, that we can do more than them. Right. If we have our new nation today, that we can arise to oppress the white race. And they know that if we have Biafra today, Biafra is going to subdue all those rubbish that we have been encountering today. Biafra today, we are all over the world. We are gifted, we are talented, we are blessed. And in, in, in the times of wisdom, we are blessed. Right. In the times of mineral resources, we are highly blessed. We don't only have a, a crude oil, we have coal as well that was that that is, that is located that is found in Enugu, Enugu, which is the coal city right. in the eastern part, in in, in the Biafra land. Sorry, and that, that's the major reason why when they see that we have all it takes in technology, we know what we can produce, and even up to now, they, they know that we can produce more than what they expect. Right. In that Nigeria of a country today, anything that comes good. Do you believe that we have a manufacturing uh, company today that, 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 that is owned by our brother right. uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, the Biafra land, which is uh, named um, Innocent? Uh, he owns a, a, a manufacturing company, uh, a car manufacturing company. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? So they know what we have and they know our work. Right. And that is the reason why they are fighting tooth and nail to, to, to prevent that, to wage us, to stop us, to marginalize us, to oppress us, and even to subdue us to the lowest speed. So that is the reason why I am calling out all the African, the black, the black one, the black one that thought they are black American. You are not from America. Your origin remain in Biafra. Your, your, your roots is in Biafra land. There is nothing right. you can do today that the white can ever, ever accept you. Prepare yourself, support. Right.
if the other comes today, every other Africa will rise up from abject poverty because as long as I'm concerned, Dominable Zoological Republic is one of the poorest countries that is going down economy, they are going down everything, nothing is working, not even a day. Right. So we are fighting not just for fighting sake, we are fighting to raise and to bring out other Africans from this kind of oppression. The oppression is too much. Right. It's too much. We are African, we are not white. So if you are in America today, stop calling yourself black American because you are not from America. Exactly. Think about your roots, trace your roots, and you will be back on. The only way we can fight this cause is only if we join hands together. The restoration of Biafran, which is our sovereign nation, which is our sovereign state today, it lies in our hands. Today is for our benefit. If you network again. So what I'm trying to do is Your line breaking up again. I think the sister line is going out again. Yep. Well, her connection went out again. So I'm going to just say this and end this on this note, man. I thank everybody for tuning in on this live, man. I just wanted to hop on here real quick and send my salutations out on Biafran Heroes Day and to try to bring a better understanding to my people, to the new Africans, the Africans born in the slave land of America to bring a better understanding to try to get them to come support and use their voice to speak on a Biafran. They have a voice and they need to support the Biafran struggle. You feel me? So I, I, man, I thank everybody for tuning into this live. I'm going to try to do this more often when I get a chance, you know what I'm saying? So be on the lookout for that, man, because I'm going to try to start off the new African history channel and I'm going to try to bring Biafra and new Africans together so we can, you know, use our one common voice, you see what I'm saying, to try to help Biafra get their nation restored and to also help us out here in North America to get our nation uh, 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 free and independent of the United States of America. So I'm going to sign off on this note, man. Hockey Quayley Shakur, man. Long live the great ancestors of Biafra and long live the new African ancestors of North America and other great Republic of New Africa, the provisional government of Republic of New Africa, man. Thanks to sister for coming on. I appreciate you coming on, my sister Lizzie. I love you. Keep the fight up. And and, and a shout out to those two brothers that also came on, man. So I'm going to sign off, man. Free the land by any means necessary. I don't know what this live doing. Yeah, you're welcome, sis. But I don't know what's up with this thing. It's jammed. What is the live thing doing? What is this live button doing?
I appreciate it, bro. This thing is jammed up my damn life. Yeah, I know, bro. I don't know what this thing doing. <laughs> you said switch off phone? Yeah, I'm going to switch it off. Yeah, let me switch it off. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. One love, y'all. 